It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode is brought to you by HP+. In a world full of smart devices, isn't it about time your printer got smart too? Now printing is smart with HP+. And the HP Smart app is how it all happens. You can print from your phone with just a tap, no matter where you are. Even from your garage slash home office slash yoga studio. Huh, that is smart. HP+. Learn more about smart printing at hp.com slash smart. You're locked on wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Locker Room. You can download the app and join me next week during the playoffs against the Vegas Golden Knights to get in on the action. Locker Room, changing the way we talk sports. On today's episode of Lockdown Wild, we will do a brief recap of the season for the Minnesota Wild, the highs, the lows, and uh, we will gear up and look at the playoff opponent. We finally know who the Wild are going to play. It'll be the Vegas Golden Knights starting on Sunday, so we'll give you a playoff preview as well. Some things to look for for the Wild as they gear up for the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. My name is Seth Topol, host of Locked on Wild, veteran of over 10 years of Minnesota sports coverage, including the last two years covering exclusively the Minnesota Wild. Happy to have you along. Make sure you give us a follow wherever you listen to podcasts. You can also follow us on Twitter, at Locked on Wild, and you can follow me on Twitter as well, at Seth Topes. Let's dive in. Last night's game was uh, a 7-3 loss to the St. Louis Blues. The Wild rested a bunch of their regulars, so really not surprised by that result, but at the same time, I've seen two main uh, factions of uh, last night's game. That is uh, those who are glad that the Wild didn't get anybody hurt and are going into the playoffs rested and ready to go. I've also seen a group of Wild fans upset that the team has basically backed into the playoffs uh, in the uh, the worst possible way with how the last two games have gone against the St. Louis Blues. And honestly, I see the reasoning behind both of them. So I wanted to address that a little bit here. Uh, and then we'll uh, we'll peek back at the season for the Wild, but um, in, in terms of those that uh, that say that the Wild did the right thing by resting players and they're going into the series fully healthy and uh, and ready to go, I I agree with that. I'm glad that uh, we haven't seen any sort of catastrophic injuries for this team down the stretch, but uh, it, at the same time, that uh, that is the only way that uh, the Wild have a chance against the likes of, uh, of Vegas and Colorado is uh, if they're going in fully healthy. I shouldn't say that's the only chance. It, it gives them the best chance uh, against the likes of the Vegas Golden Knights and the Colorado Avalanche going into the playoffs fully healthy and somewhat rested and uh, ready to go. So I, I do applaud the Wild uh, on one side of the coin for making sure that they didn't suffer any sort of late-season injury and that they got everybody back and ready to go uh, for the playoff push. While at the same time, also not being super enthused with uh, what this team did down the stretch uh, against the Golden Knights and also against the St. Louis Blues. Uh, The Wilds were 1-4 against the Blues down the stretch. Uh, They uh, also split with the Golden Knights. Really the uh, the only wins that the Wild had um, since they uh, finished up their series with the Blues were against the Anaheim Ducks. They did beat Vegas and St. Louis once each, but you want to be going into the playoffs uh, with some momentum and some surge, and that, I think, is why we've seen so many Minnesota sports teams that have uh, have gone in a little cold and have ended up getting ousted early is because that is a philosophy that some teams use is the, hey, we've clinched, 
really not a whole lot. And, and that was that was the other thing too is it was going to take a lot for the Wild to improve their playoff positioning. They could have, if they had won both games against the Blues, they could have vaulted up to second place and then hosted the first round series. Uh, in this case, uh, against the Colorado Avalanche, but at the same time, there really wasn't a whole lot that they had to gain from uh, from going full bore and from uh, from winning those last few games, other than carrying some playoff momentum. And think about how much that could have lifted this team by beating a team that had throttled them all season in the St. Louis Blues. If you go into the playoffs having beaten the Blues in the final two games of the season, that looks immensely different than uh, where this team is at heading into this round of the playoffs against the Vegas Golden Knights. They uh, they gave it their their all in the kind of final tune-up for the postseason in the first game of the uh, the series against the Blues. Played a really, really good first period and were down 2 nothing to St. Louis. And then after that, it just seemed like the, uh, the foot went off the gas pedal uh, because with how the other games were going between uh, Colorado and uh, the Kings and the Golden Knights and the Sharks, there really was no chance that the Wild were going to, uh, going to be able to hop up to second at that point. So it seemed like at that point they said, okay, let's, uh, let's make sure that we keep our squad fully healthy and, uh, and go into this postseason at full strength. Now, maybe that's not what happens. That, uh, that obviously is just something that me as kind of an observer – Noticed, but it definitely seemed like once those first period scores trickled in from those other two games, that uh, the Wild just at that point said, "Yep, there's there's really nothing we can do uh, to improve our spot." And they just they just took the foot off the pedal a little bit. And then you look at last night's game, a three zero lead after one period, and then all of a sudden, St. Louis takes the lead in the second, and they just never look back in the third. And you got yourself a 7-3 defeat, and now you're rolling into the playoffs having lost two in a row. And you have a team, the fourth seed, the St. Louis Blues, that has owned you all season. So let's say the Wild do get past the Golden Knights here in the first round. They're either going to have to go up against Colorado or the St. Louis Blues that have had their number all season long. So I, I see both sides of it because... If they would have lost someone like Kevin Fiala or Kirill Kaprizov or, or even Marcus Foligno, then uh, that puts you at a significant disadvantage against the Golden Knights. But at the same time, now you've got to try to rev up that engine and get momentum back to you uh, against a very tough team that closed the regular season uh, in a really strong way in the uh, the Golden Knights. So yeah, I see both sides, and I, I really I don't know which side is better. Uh, so that's that's just kind of where I see the Wild heading into this postseason. That uh, they could have done a little more to capture some momentum and uh, get a little bit of a surge, but at the same time they're going in fully healthy, and I guess that's that's really all you can ask for in these playoffs. Coming up next, we will take a little look at the season for the Wilds. Lots of highs, some lows. We'll recap it all next here on Locked On Wild. But first, I want to talk to you a little bit about Wealthfront. Investing can be complicated, but whether you're a beginner or you've been investing for years, Wealthfront makes it easy. They have the right tools for every portfolio. Wealthfront can create a portfolio of globally diversified, low-cost index funds personalized just for you in minutes. No manual trades, no picking stocks, no watching the stock market every day. They automatically handle all the investing based on preferences you control. Wealthfront is trusted with over $20 billion of assets, and you can get your first $5,000 managed for free by going to Wealthfront.com slash LockedOnNHL. All you need is $500 to get started. Grow your wealth the easy way and let Wealthfront do the work for you. To get your first $5,000 managed for free for life, go to Wealthfront.com slash LockedOnNHL. That's W-E-A-L-T-H-F-R-O-N-T dot com slash LockedOnNHL to start growing your savings. Go to Wealthfront.com slash LockedOnNHL and get started today. 
What's up, everybody? David Harrison here of the Locked On Washington Football Team podcast. I actually just retired from the Army, and while that was a very exciting moment in my life, it also meant uprooting my family one last time. And not only that, but we moved in the midst of COVID, so finding the place that we really wanted to live wasn't as easy as it usually would have been, so we actually have moved a second time. And of course, every time we've had a wonder, is all of our stuff going to fit with our new house? Did you know that people who live in cities move six to eight times before they even hit their early 30s? That's why you've got to check out Feather. Feather is a furniture rental company designed for people who want to feel at home no matter how often they move. Furnishing one bedroom can cost upwards of $6,000, but with Feather, you can furnish a bedroom with high quality, beautifully designed furniture for the cost of your monthly utility bill. Their delivery team brings furniture directly to your home in as little as seven days. They handle all the heavy lifting so you can go from an empty apartment to a fully furnished home without lifting a finger or assembling anything. And it's not just furniture. They have rugs, lamps, wall art, and more. What if you move to a new place with a different layout? No problem. You can easily get furniture that works for any space. Plus, by renting from Feather, you're choosing a sustainable alternative to fast furniture that won't end up in landfills. I remember vividly having to take time off of work or away from family events or social events that I wanted to attend just to wait for several furniture deliveries coming at different times throughout the week, but you don't have to go through that anymore. Try a new way to furnish your home right now. Feather has an exclusive offer just for Locked On listeners. If you go to livefeather.com right now and use the promo code Locked On, you'll receive $300 off your first month. Again, that's livefeather.com and use our promo code Locked On for $300 off your first month. Continuing with today's episode of Locked On, Wilds, the first round playoff series against the Vegas Golden Knights starts Sunday at 2 o'clock Central Time uh, as the Wild will head to Vegas to get things started. You'll be able to find me on Twitter at Seth Topes. I'm going to be hosting a space during the game to uh, chat about uh, what is going on. We'll uh, we'll see everything happen in real time and hopefully the Wild will be able to uh, get the series started on a high note with a win. Now, looking at the uh, season for the Minnesota Wilds, a, uh, a weird season to say the least because uh, we started in January and uh, the Wilds got off to a great start. A couple of four to three overtime wins. Kirill Kaprizov getting started on the right foot in that series. And uh, the Wilds finished their first road trip of the season with a 3-1 and one record. However, the skids started to hit after that, and uh, the Wild found themselves at 2-1 uh, and one heading into February 3rd. COVID-19 hit the Wild at that point, and uh, the Wild did not play a game again until February 16th. They lost to the Los Angeles Kings and fell to 6-6 six and six at that point in the season. That was kind of the turning point for this Minnesota Wild team as they would finish the road trip in style with a 6-2 win over the Colorado Avalanche. They then uh, beat the LA Kings twice, and uh, we turned the calendar to March with the Wild at 12-6. and six. An overtime loss to the Vegas Golden Knights and a 5-1 to one loss to Vegas on the road um, left the Wild at 12-7-1. But then another surge, including a couple of wins at XL Energy Center against the Golden Knights, left the Wild 18-8-1. Two more losses to the Avalanche, followed by a uh, three-game sweep at home, 21-10-1. And And, uh, then we move to the start of when we actually started to play the St. Louis Blues, 24-12-2 after a nice 8-3 win over Colorado. Uh, nine to one loss to the Blues on April 9th, and uh, a three two overtime loss to the Blues as well. Then we saw a nifty little seven game winning streak from April 14th to April 24th to get to 31, 13 and three on the season. And uh, the St. Louis Blues and the Vegas Golden Knights dominated the rest of the stretch and the wild finished 35, 16 and five on the season. And uh, in this season, we have seen plenty of good from this wild team. We've seen the emergence of Kirill Kaprizov, the Calder Trophy favorite at this point. Uh, Now that's not to say some shenanigans could not lead to uh, Dallas, uh, Jason Robertson winning it, or uh, or anyone else for that matter. But Kaprizov should be the favorite to win the Calder Trophy this year because uh, of what he has done for this wild team. We've seen the emergence of uh, other young players, Jewel Erickson-Eck, Jordan Greenway, 
We have seen the emergence of uh, Nico Sturm as a bottom line uh, option for this team. And uh, we have seen brilliance from Cam Talbot and uh, a strong season from Capo Kakinen as well, all culminating to the fact that uh, I think Bill Guerin made the right call in uh, having Dean Evison be his uh, his head coach for this wild squad. Now, we had some oddities happen throughout the season as well, including the incident uh, with Zach Parisi in Vegas, in which Parisi stayed on the ice after his shift was over to try to help Marcus Foligno get a hat trick that led to the... Uh, that led to a goal for the Vegas Golden Knights, who then ended up winning that game 5-4 to four in overtime. Parisi then was benched after the game for uh, those antics, and uh, now we have seen him become a healthy scratch over the, uh, the last couple of games. And uh, it's, it, it's been a very strange season, but uh, the Wild have come out of it uh, about as good as we could have expected them to be this year. Let's not also forget uh, some of Dean Evison's better moments. Coming up with the Greenway, Erickson Eck, Felino line, getting uh, some elite play out of uh, Zach Parisi, Nico Sturm, and Nick Benino, uh, figuring out that Kirill Kaprizov and Matt Zuccarello are a match together. And uh, the line juggling also holding the team to a higher standard. Coming back after a very successful road trip early on in the season having a sloppy practice, and Dean really laying into the team, saying that if you expect to just show up and be able to uh, to win on a nightly basis by playing like this, that is uh, not how it's going to happen. Uh, let's not forget some of the brilliance down the stretch for this uh, wild team. Uh, rallying to tie and... Um, getting into uh, rallying to tie late in the third period in uh, consecutive games against the St. Louis Blues and the Vegas Golden Knights, rallying from uh, a couple goals down against Vegas in the final minute to win that game in regulation, 6-5. to five. That, uh, that may have been the game of the year. And uh, also, that, uh, that game I highlighted earlier, the 8-3 uh, to three win over the Colorado Avalanche, just stunning Colorado. Uh, in that game, and uh, just really a uh, a great season for this team in which we've seen them shift from that uh, traditional grit and grind style that we have expected from this team pretty much since they've existed to now becoming a more than capable offensive team. Uh, it has been a very fun season to watch for the Minnesota Wild, and we hope that it continues with a deep playoff run. When we come back, we will look at the Vegas Golden Knights ahead of the opening round playoff series that starts on Sunday between these two teams. That is next here on Locked on Wild. But first, I want to talk to you a little bit about Built Bar. Built Bar, those delicious and amazing for you protein bars. They come in nine different flavors. Coconut, coconut almond, cherry, raspberry, mint brownie, peanut butter brownie, double chocolate, and salted caramel. All of them are delicious. If you're not sure which Built Bar is right for you, you can buy a mixed box where you get two each of the nine flavors. The taste is great, but the better part is that they're healthy too. Most Built Bars have 17 or more grams of protein, are only 130 calories, they've got only 4 grams of sugar, and just 4 net carbs. Nine amazing flavors, all tasty and all healthy. So if you are looking for a snack that will help you stay in shape, do not miss out on Built Bar. Head to BuiltBar.com right now. And if you do head to Built Bar, you'll get 15% off of your first order if you use the promo code LOCKED15. Again, that's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at BuiltBar.com. If you aren't using BetOnline.ag yet, you are definitely missing out. BetOnline.ag is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports action. Major League Baseball is in full swing, and you can track every pitch, every at-bat at betonline.ag. You can get all the latest news, odds, and info for all of your sporting needs, including Major League Baseball, the NBA and the NHL push to the playoffs, and your favorite UFC and MMA action as well. So before the next pitch, before puck drop, before the opening tip, before the fight gets underway, head to betonline.ag on your laptop or mobile device, and check out all the great sporting news, sign-up bonuses, and contest information. 
Don't wait even a second longer. This is your chance to get into the game as teams prep for their runs to the playoffs. So head to betonline.ag on your laptop or mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Make sure to use the promo code Locked On at betonline.ag, your online sportsbook experts. Final segment of Locked On Wild for today, and just a programming note for next week. So since the game is uh, on Sunday to start off the series, we will talk to the uh, Locked On Golden Knights uh, and get a little bit of a sense of what's coming uh, for the series. So uh, you can listen for that on Monday show. Plus, throughout the rest of the week, we'll be talking to some wild media members as well. Jam packed show. Plus, we'll have content during the games. Uh, you'll want to make sure to follow me on Twitter at Seth Topes. We'll be doing those spaces on Twitter. I think it's called Space or MySpace or something like that. We'll be doing those throughout the game as well. We'll, of course, have locker rooms that, uh, that we have throughout uh, the playoff games as well. So, should be a full week and then some of content here at Locked on Wild. Let's take a look at the Wild and the Golden Knights as they match up for the postseason series uh, that we had all hoped for, and um, now we get it in the first round. So I guess thanks are due in part, uh, first off, to the Colorado Avalanche for winning and uh, winning the division so that we got this matchup uh, against the Golden Knights. Every game, it seemed like, came down to uh, one or two goals. Uh, the Wild won the season series 5-3, to three, and uh, there was only two games that were decided by two or more goals. That was uh, the 5-1 to one loss in Game 2, and the Wild coming back to win 2 nothing in Game 3 of the season series. Other than that, it was 5-4, to four, it was 4-3, to three, it was 3-2, to 2-1, two, 6-5, two to one, six to five, and 3-2 to two in uh, all of those games uh, against Vegas. Now, we know enough about the Golden Knights to know who is going to be the ones that uh, are leading them this season. And, of course, that starts and ends with Mark Stone, who in the 5-1 uh, to one win for the Golden Knights against the Wild had five assists and uh, has been just an unbelievable machine Mark Stone, Max Pacioretty, and Jonathan Marcheseau, uh, just an unbelievable tandem that uh, the Golden Knights are able to deploy. But do not forget about the likes of Alex Took, who had 18 goals this season. They're also uh, very deep on defense, Shea Theodore, and uh, the rest of the Golden Knights defense all uh, going to definitely make it tough on the Wilds. Uh, from a goal-scoring perspective. Oh, and then you go to the other side of the coin and you have to try to crack Marc-Andre Fleury, who uh, was just brilliant pretty much all season long and has given the Wild some fits in uh, previous matchups uh, against Vegas. But the Wild did get to him a couple of times this season as well, so it's not as though he is, uh, is invincible in the net, but it is definitely going to be a tough task uh, for the Wild to uh, to try to get past him to uh, to score enough goals in this series. Now, the biggest key I think in this series is going to be the goaltending for the Wild, and I uh, wanted to draw you to a tweet from uh, Aaron Heckman, a good friend of mine who uh, is writing for a couple of different spots, the Hockey Writers, 10K Rinks for zone coverage, and uh, Gone Puck Wild as well. Uh, he notes in th- um, that Cam Talbot and Kako Kakinen have combined for uh, minus 17.28 goals saved above expected uh, since April 28th. Talbot himself is negative uh, 11.37, and Kakinen is negative 5.91. They have not had any games with a positive uh, GSA uh, goal saved above expected, uh, and Kakinen in the game against St. Louis was a minus 4.35. That data from uh, Evolving Hockey. So the goaltending has been pretty bad for the Wilds over the uh, the last couple of games. Uh, Talbot is 
comes in for his playoff career at a 9.57 goals above expected, uh, 7.11 in 2016, 2017, which was the third highest in the playoffs that year. Uh, again, via evolving hockey, um, had a 924 playoff save percentage as well. So hopefully Talbot is able to kick it into that next gear uh, in this series against Vegas. Otherwise, we'll likely see more of what we have seen over the uh, the last few games of the season against the St. Louis Blues and others. So I would say the biggest key for the Wild is going to be goaltending. Do they get some standout performances? And uh, are they going to be able to keep pace with that top line of the Golden Knights? Can the uh, Felino, Greenway, Erickson, Eck line slow those guys down a little bit? What is Kirill Kaprizov's playoff start going to look like? Um, how much do the Golden Knights key in on him to, uh, to try to slow him down? These are all huge questions that we will have some better answers to coming up on uh, Monday's show after Sunday's game. So make sure to stay with us. Plenty of playoff coverage coming for you next week here on Locked on Wild. That's going to wrap it up for today's episode of Locked on Wild. Make sure to follow us wherever you listen to podcasts. Make sure to key in to Locked on Golden Knights as well uh, for a little intel on our round one playoff opponent. And uh, as I said, we'll be checking in with Locked On Golden Knights next week to uh, kind of play preview the series in more detail. You can follow the show on Twitter as well at Locked On Wild. You can follow me on Twitter at Seth Topes. Have a great weekend and uh, get playoff ready. Playoff starts Sunday. We'll recap that and more with another edition of Locked On Wild.